Hi, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Leila El Katabi. I am an associate professor in genetics at the University of Paris and the Cochon Hospital in Paris. And I'm going to present you um, some of our, of our results of the validation study on the use of optical genome mapping for the detection of chromosomal aberrations in constitutional diseases. This is a collaborative study uh, between French and Nijmegen teams. So here are my disclosures, and we specify that some of the reagents were offered by BioNano. So first, let's set the context of the study. Um, as you know, chromosomal aberrations, especially structural variations, um, are important first for diversity, inter-individual diversity, and they are also involved in many diseases, especially developmental and reproductive disorders in constitutional diseases. In particular, <coughs> sorry, clinical uh, genomics is fast expanding uh, nowadays. Uh, in particular, sequencing-based uh, genetic tests, um, and these uh, have allowed for new discoveries and uh, offered an increased diagnosis rate, especially of single nucleotide variants. However, the detection of structural variants is still challenging, as you may know, um, since sequencing-based approaches are not yet ready to offer a comprehensive detection of structural variations in a diagnosis set setting and may not be uh, preferred for some indications in particular reproductive disorders, at least in some countries. Um, so uh, karyotyping and microarray analysis are still used uh, in these indications as first line tests. Uh, although karyotyping has a very low resolution estimated to be a five to 10 megabases and microarray, as you know, does not detect balanced rearrangements and do not provide information on the location of the aberration in the genome, nor its orientation. So uh, in this proof of concept study, um, we aimed at validating genome, uh, optical genome mapping using BioNano on known chromosomal aberrations that were previously identified by current standard of line of care, sorry, first-line tests, which are karyotyping, FISH, and our CNV microarray. So our consortium consisted of four teams, um, three French teams, uh, one of which uh, is mine in Cochin Hospital in Paris, um, the team of um, Dr. Céline Pebral-Richard at Clermont-Ferrand, Dr. Caroline Schlubbollard in Lyon and uh, our uh, dear collaborat collaborators at Redwood Center in the team of Alexander Oshin. So let's uh, have a look at the study population. We included 85 samples uh, from 85 uh, patients uh, that displayed uh, different uh, constitutional disorders, many of which were developmental disorders, but we also had a significant proportion of reproductive disorders as well as prenatal conditions. And here in uh, the right pie chart, you can um, see that um, we had results from at least karyotype or CMA uh, in uh, two thirds of cases. And uh, in a third of them, we had uh, both karyotype and CMA results, and some, in some cases also whole exome sequencing results. So in total, we uh, analyzed 100 chromosomal aberrations as many patients had complex uh, rearrangements. Half of these aberrations were balanced and you can see from the table here and the pie chart that uh, we included uh, all sorts of uh, chromosomal aberrations that one can have in a diagnosis lab. In one sentence, uh, the summary of our result is 100% con concordance, except for aberrations uh, with currently unmappable regions of the human genome, especially centromeric regions. And these were hence beyond the scope of this study. So uh, first regarding CNV uh, detection, the technology allows for 
uh, their detection using two different pipelines. Um, the first one is the CNV pipeline that you uh, have here uh, with an example of a, a large deletion in chromosome 6. So this CNV pipeline is based on coverage. As you can see here, um, the right side of the, the figure shows less molecules that have been assembled. Um, and this is uh, the red uh, dashed line uh, compared to the left side of the figure that shows um, more molecules that are assembled. So this is suggestive of a deletion. And the second pipeline is uh, the SV pipeline, which is based on the comparison of the labeling pattern to a reference, um, as uh, explained by the BioNano team previously. Here are some results uh, from the CNV pipeline. Uh, this one will uh, be suitable for the detection of large losses and gains, as well as enuploides. And you can see from these examples uh, several cases of large deletions uh, that are highlighted in uh, red and duplications highlighted in blue. These are uh, of at least one megabase and above. You can also have an overall view with the circus plot. So here in the middle, you have a CNV track um, that shows a blue line corresponding to the number of uh, copies. And um, you have here an example of a deletion that shows a drop in this blue line on chromosome 8 uh, in favor of a deletion at this uh, location. And you can also easily uh, see uh, the presence of an aneuploidy. Here it's an example of a 47XXY karyotype. And you can see with the blue line from the CNV track that you have two copies of chromosome X as with autosomes and only one copy of chromosome Y. The um, uh, recent version of the software uh, will also add an, a new view, genome-wide view of the CNV plot. And uh, this is uh, really comfortable and um, similar to some CMA algorithms um, displays. Secondly, the SV pipeline is uh, more uh, adapted to the detection of small CNVs with a higher precision uh, of the size and the lo localization of the breakpoints. And you can see here an example of this, uh, of its uh, 500 KB uh, deletion as shown in the left side with the CMA result. And this is shown as well by the SV pipeline on the right side of the figure uh, where the comparison of the sample map in blue to the reference map in green allows for um, the detection of the deleted segment. Here is an example of a duplication. So this duplication um, is tandem direct duplication as, as shown by the blue map uh, of the sample. So I will see later on an, an example of an inverted duplication. The strength of the tool is to combine both pipelines to get a full picture of the aberration. So we're going to see two examples of this. This one is an example of a well-known uh, 8P terminal deletion and inverted duplication. On the left side of the screen, you have a, a screenshot of the CMA result showing the deletion and the duplication that are well detected. However, uh, you don't see the, orient the location of the duplication. And on the right side of the screen, you have a fish image that shows that this, the duplicated segment is actually inverted. And this is around by the show pointed, pinpointed by the yellow uh, arrow. So when you look at the optical genome mapping results, uh, you can see easily the deletion and the duplication 
with the CNV pipeline. And in addition to that, the SV pipeline provides you information on the location of the duplicated segment. And actually, the genome map of the patient is in favor of an inversion event exactly at the breakpoint of the duplicated and the deleted segment. Here is another example of a ring chromosome X as shown in this karyotype. Actually, uh, optical genome mapping results showed first uh, large deletions in uh, the P and Q arm of chromosome X uh, and uh, the presence of a segment near to the centromere, which has two copy number. On the right side now of the screen, you can see the results from uh, the SV pipeline uh, that shows the presence of fusion molecule between the blue and the green uh, ends of the, the segment, uh, which is in uh, suggestive of, the, of a ring chromosome. Now, uh, we had almost half of uh, cases uh, which dis who displayed apparently balanced events. Uh, so let's have a look at two examples. Here is an inversion case on chromosome three, the Q arm of chromosome three as shown in with the red arrows. You can see from the circles plot uh, the presence of an event on chromosome three, uh, the connecting pink line in the circles plot suggests an inversion or insertion in event in chromosome three. And this is shown nicely and exclusively by the, the software. So looking into the assemblies provides information on the localization of the breakpoints here with two fusion maps corresponding to uh, two fusion events on chromosome three. One is proximal and the other one is distal. Uh, and this allows the refinement of the location uh, of the breakpoints that was estimated by karyotype. So here is an example of a translocation between chromosome five and eight as shown in the chromosomes here from the karyotype. Optical genome mapping uh, shows with the circles plot representation a pin, uh, connecting pink line between chromosome five and chromosome eight. And uh, you can look at the sample maps with the SV pipeline um, here in blue. So this sample map shows that a fusion between uh, chromosome five in orange and chromosome eight in purple. This allowed us to uh, reveal the disruption of some disease-causing genes uh, in balanced uh, translocations. Um, here are two examples of these situations. The first one is a translocation between chromosome 9 and 17, which disrupts uh, cancer one gene. And the second one is a translocation between chromosome 20 and 21, uh, disrupting the gene dirk one a In both cases, uh, the patient's phenotype were uh, concordant with the loss of function of these genes. Finally, we had some uh, complex situations. Here is a three-way translocation between chromosome 3, 13, and 5. Uh, which was also known uh, to have a few CNVs. And actually, optical genome mapping, as you can see from the circus plot, as well as the assembly maps on chromosome 3, shows actually a chromothripsis, which was um, partially uh, confirmed by whole genome sequencing as well. So we have many other interesting cases that you can look at uh, on BioArchive on uh, the current published version of the paper. To conclude, we were able here to validate the technology on a wide range of sample origin. 
we um, also show 100% concordance with standard cytogenetic tools um, with the, uh, within the limit of breakpoints line within mappable regions, uh, as explained before. Um, we uh, also found the technology very easy to use from the technical and analytical uh, point of view. Uh, it does not require any additional bioinformatics um, analysis. We also expect that uh, optical genome mapping will provide significant input to diagnosis by improving genotype-phenotype correlations, thanks to high precision uh, in the localization of breakpoints and the, their, the structure of the aberrations. It will also allow for new discoveries uh, in unsolved cases, as shown in the case of uh, disease coding, causing genes disruption. And this will uh, provide a reduced delay to diagnosis. Finally, and importantly, um, it is expected that the technology will give uh, fewer incidental findings compared to others, as no sequence uh, is uh, provided here. And uh, this may be uh, very uh, prefer preferable in some uh, clinical indications, in particular in repro reproductive disorders. Overall, uh, our results uh, suggest that optical genome mapping may become next generation cytogenetics. So thank you for uh, your uh, attention. And uh, I'd like to thank my great collaborators, teams, uh, without whom this journey would not have been so amazing. So uh, Dr. Oshin, um, Tuomo Monteri, Cornelia Nevlin, Dominic Smits and, Smith, sorry, and others in the Radboud Center, as well as my French collaborators, Caroline Schubbollard in Lyon, Céline Richard in Clermont-Ferrand, and my uh, Cochin uh, hospital team. Many thanks to the amazing BioNano team in San Diego and Europe for their support and all their efforts to improve cytogenetics. And many thanks to you uh, for following us. Thank you.